Hello Booktube, I'm Jonathan and welcome to Words in Time. In today's video, I'm bringing you 10 sci-fi book recommendations in the format of If you like this, try this. Let's get started with If you like Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, try Sea of Rust by C. Robert Cargill. So when I think of Dark Matter, the first things that I think to compare it to, rather than any other books, is usually Christopher Nolan movies like Inception or Memento, because I think this book just has great film-like qualities to it. The pacing is amazing, the descriptions are cinematic, and it's just a really fun adventure. And the same can be said for Sea of Rust, which makes sense because the author C. Robert Cargill is also a screenwriter, most well known for Doctor Strange. And both of these are just really well paced. I think they're a lot of fun and but not just in a sort of popcorn, cheesy action flick kind of way. There's also some really cool sci-fi concepts in there as well. So I think that's definitely gonna scratch the itch for people that are looking for a fun, fast read, but also hitting on some cool science fiction ideas as well. All right, for my second recommendation, if you like Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut, try Waystation by Clifford D. Simak. So Kurt Vonnegut is one of my all-time favorite writers. I think that his books can be funny and absurd, but also emotional and poignant. And while I don't think Simak is quite as comedic a writer as Vonnegut is, I think he taps into similar themes that he explores in his book Waystation. When it comes to people and relationships and society as a whole, and other themes like war and technology, I think the two authors share a lot of similarities. And while Waystation isn't necessarily a book that is gonna blow you away with its plot progression, the ideas, the moments, the characters, the writing style, all just create such a rich, vivid experience that I think if you're a fan of either of these books, you'll understand, you'll recognize as well that these are stories that just stay with you for a really long time. And if you pick up either of them, I hope they stick with you. I hope they land as hard for you as they did with me. Next up, for my third recommendation, if you like Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey, try Pandora's Star by Peter F. Hamilton. So both of these are near future space operas with a little bit of a mystery slash detective element to them as well. When you go from Leviathan Wakes to Pandora's Star, you are gonna lose a little bit of the pacing and you're trading, I think, depth of character for a wider cast of characters. But in return, you are getting a massive world and you are getting some more technical descriptions, technological details. So I think if you like the style of The Expanse, but you're looking for a big space opera world to sink your teeth into, then you might also really enjoy Pandora's Star. All right, for recommendation number four, we have if you like Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell, try Eversion by Alistair Reynolds. So both of these books share a similar quality of, if you were to read the first few chapters, you might think, Jonathan, are you sure either of these are sci-fi books? Well, let me break it down for you, because Cloud Atlas is quite well known for its structure. It has six stories told in halves that is in the order of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. A version doesn't quite do the same thing, but it also does have different time periods. We have stories in the 1800s, the 1900s, and in the future. And so both of these books don't start off in a sci-fi setting, but as we progress, we start to get some sci-fi elements that are introduced, and we also start to try and piece together the puzzle of how these different timelines are connected. I think both of them are really well done. I think that Cloud Atlas, for me, I like some stories more than others, but that's kind of the nature of uh, a book comprised of stories and a version I felt a little bit lost for a while but when it all came together with those amazing classic Alistair Reynolds sci-fi concepts I thought it absolutely stuck the landing so if you like one or the other I highly recommend you pick up the other book because they're both great. Moving on to my fifth recommendation if you like Neuromancer by William Gibson try Permutation City by Greg Egan. Neuromancer is a classic that set the bar for cyberpunk Permutation City is a cyberpunk novel that focuses a little bit more on the cyber than the punk. So if you're looking for a dark, gritty, heavy, violent, action-packed cyberpunk story, there's probably some better cyberpunk options out there for you. But if you're looking for a cyberpunk novel that focuses on the ideas, you like the fact that Neuromancer was a little bit difficult. It made you kind of 
push through and really kind of earn some of those rewarding ideas that kind of get revealed towards the end or if you're me after doing a little bit more research on the book after having finished it then i think you're gonna love permutation city because when it comes to sci-fi concepts like virtual reality artificial intelligence and the existential questions that those can create to do with physics and spirituality then i think you're gonna absolutely love permutation city if you saw my top 10 reads of 2022 video, Permutation City was pretty high up there. It's one of my favorite things that I've ever read. So if you're a fan of cyberpunk, virtual reality, you got to give Permutation City a try. And for my sixth recommendation, if you like Empire of Silence by Christopher Rocchio, try Deathstalker by Simon R. Green. Sun Eater is a sword and planet sci fantasy space opera series, and if you're looking for something similar, then you might also enjoy Deathstalker. Now, Deathstalker is a little bit more trashy, a little bit more pulpy, it has a tongue in cheek approach to it. It's not quite as literary, doesn't have as many historical references as the Sun Eater series does, but if you're looking for something with fun sword duels and great shootouts, great action scenes, as well as some really fun characters and some very well done interplanetary politics, then I think you're also going to have a great time with Deathstalker. Just know it's a similar series, but it definitely has a slightly more silly, comedic, tongue-in-cheek approach. And with recommendation number seven, we have, if you like The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, try The Snow Queen by Joan D. Vinge. So this one's for the science fiction and fantasy readers that lean a little bit more into the fantasy. Neither of these books are super driven by the plot or sci-fi technology or concepts, but rather they focus more on the characters and the themes. The fifth season does some interesting things with POVs, which is not so much the case in The Snow Queen, but if you like some of the thematical explorations in the fifth season, then I think there's going to be some aspects that you might enjoy in The Snow Queen as well. And for my eighth recommendation, if you like Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky, try The Moat in God's Eye by Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell. So both of these books are first contact stories, and The Moat in God's Eye is a classic, and Children of Time is just one of the greatest modern achievements in that genre as well. I think for me in The Moat in God's Eye, there were a couple of elements that felt a tad dated, and I preferred the ending to, in Children of Time, but when it comes to alien species and exploring their biology, their history, their social structures, I was just absolutely fascinated by the motis in The Moat in God's Eye. So if you enjoy Children of Time, if you enjoyed the spiders, then definitely read up on the motis as well. And for my second last recommendation, number nine, if you like A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess, Try Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood. So both of these are books that say, I held a mirror up to society and I didn't like what I saw. Now, I might be being a bit silly, but neither of these books are silly. They're both very heavy, dark, dystopian futures. And if you're looking for a cozy sci-fi read, I do not recommend either of these. Uh, they both go into some dark elements of the human psyche of society and Neither of them are super focused necessarily on the technology and the ideas, although uh, Orison Craig does actually have a few cool things to do with biotech, but really both of these stories focus on characters and society and what kind of things could we be headed towards if we don't fix certain elements to do with them. Both of these left a rather lasting impression on me despite being rather tough reads. So if that's something that you're mentally prepared to dive into, then I would recommend picking up either of these books. So just before we get to my final recommendation, if you have any recommendations for me based on some of these books that I enjoy, feel free to leave those in the comments or on my Discord server. And while you're checking that out in the description, feel free to also check out the perks of becoming a Patreon member, where you can become one of my robots, androids, or cyborgs like Nima and A New Eden. And for my 10th and final recommendation, if you like Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton, try Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. So I thought this would be a fun one to end on because what Michael Crichton does is he comes up with really cool concepts and then uses science in order to drive a really fun and fast paced narrative. Andy Weir does something similar where he also makes maths, science, physics, kind of the centerpiece of the story, but writes it in a very accessible way and uses it to tell also a fun and fast paced story. 
I think Andy Weir is a little bit more comedic than Michael Crichton, but if you don't mind that and you are looking for a sci-fi story driven by actual science, then I think you'll enjoy both of these authors. So those are today's 10 sci-fi book recommendations. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe. It's free. And you can find more sci-fi content over here.